Welcome to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Thais Gaines, and I'm here with Dr. Jan Adens, and we're talking today about nutritional care and oncology patients. Thank you, Dr. Ahrens, for joining us. Thank you. So there will be a discussion regarding cancer cachexia guidelines at ESMO this year. What is the scope of the problem of cancer cachexia? Well, I think uh, everything is in the words because uh, the term cachexia um, evokes uh, quite different uh, meanings in, in the minds of, of different experts and oncologists, and uh, we are referring to the most recent um, definition uh, of a consensus group of saying that uh, cachexia is the combination of uh, weight loss, and maybe even a small amount, 5% of body weight, uh, together with the presence of systemic inflammation. And this, in fact, is very frequent in cancer patients, and it has, even in its uh, modest form, a serious impact on uh, clinical outcome, on quality of life, on, on treatment toxicities, and also on survival. So why is it so important to have guidelines for this issue? Well, I think just because nutrition does not uh, appear to be in the front center uh, of, of the oncologist's mind, we need some very basic statements on, on what is known, what is the evidence base. And in fact, so we went out to collect all what's, what's known at this time to put it together and have a starting point because we're trying to, to initiate some kind of paradigm change in clinical cancer care policy. And, and so we are aiming to, to uh, go to um, commitment of institutions to include uh, cancer care in the continuum of, of clinical cancer treatment. And so I think this is a good starting point. And of course, ESMO guidelines are a very prominent position to do this. Can you give us some examples of what types of issues are covered in these guidelines? Well, basically, we go through um, screening first to try to detect all patients with risk or with uh, obvious malnutrition, and then to assess all these patients more thoroughly for nutritional status, metabolic status, and, and all these uh, impairments that, that lead to loss of body weight and loss of tissue mass. So that's one thing. And uh, another important thing is to uh, help in deciding at the point where uh, nutritional care, which may be invasive with parental nutrition, where this needs to be taken back uh, during the course of advanced cancer, uh, when the patient is en uh, nearing the end of life, a situation where invasiveness should be uh, pulled back and just uh, trying to care for uh, alleviating hunger and thirst. So that's an important point. And another thing I think which is quite important is to say that we have a, a broad range of treatment targets and uh, several deficiency may be present in one patient. So we are trying to convey the message that we need a multi-targeted, multidisciplinary, multimodal treatment approach. And I think that's quite important to put this down and make this available for the community. Very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing this information. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this practice update. Continue watching our practice updates for more information about nutritional care and oncology.